praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, indeed, uh, I want to thank the Lord for uh, this conference that uh, we are having. And uh, I know we are being blessed and uh, the mists that uh, have been among us are uh, trying to be clear. Amen. Amen. Uh, and uh, I believe that uh, when we leave this conference to go back to our churches, the Lord will work mightily among us. And so uh, I want us to pray and then uh, we go to the presentation of today. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, it is uh, a joyous moment to be in your presence to be ministered to by the Holy Spirit through the ministration of the angels and through the presence of Jesus Christ in his church. I do pray that uh, the things we learn, Lord, may impart uh, our spirituality into our lives, that we may grow closer to thee. Where we have been tottering, Lord, we may be able to come from childhood and be mature in the doctrines that I will want us to have to believe at this moment. Help us to have a reason to explain for our faith and our hope in thee, Heavenly Father. And help us to be ministers which shall not mislead others, but shall guide others into all truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth, not being ashamed of anything. And so I pray that your presence may guide us, may give us a good listening and understanding. And above all, Lord, we may draw closer to thee and be able to live a life what our calling. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And uh, I'm so glad we are meeting with some people for the first time, like uh, Brother Wicky for work. And uh, Brother, I welcome you. It is always good to meet new faces and uh, to be able to share in the word of God. And so I appreciate and uh, I welcome you. You haven't missed a lot, and what you have missed, we shall be able to provide these uh, materials on a flash drive. They shall be uploaded on our website, uh, and uh, people can be able to go through them slowly and be able to read and understand without haste what you are talking about. Yesterday, we were going through two extremes, is it? Where actually we say, uh, because the system is practicing a uh, uh, kingly power, now we have to work in an independent way, independent spirit, where we are governed by no one. And we saw that these two extremes are dangerous. It is not the system which is bad, but it is how the system itself is used. And so, uh, we left at uh, this point yesterday, and uh, I'd just like to pick it from there without wasting a lot of time, because time is of much importance. In fact, we are told that uh, the little time we have left, we have to use it uh, maximally and uh, in a better way. I hope the people behind can be able to see the board, is it? Can we see the board? Can we be able to read apart from seeing? And so we left at this point that what? Saturn is, Saturn is the disorganizer. And we found this in the, the church. Uh, it is uh, organization, order and organization uh, and discipline. And uh, we read this statement in closing yesterday, oh, how Saturn will rejoice to get in among these people and disorganize the work at a time when thorough organization is what? It is essential and will be the greatest power to keep out superior surprises and to refute the claims that endorsed by the word of God. We want to hold the lines evenly that there shall be no breaking down of the system of regulation and order. And so we saw yesterday, there can be a person saying that they don't need to be regulated what they are. We need regulation. We are human beings. And this regulation is done by the word of God. This regulation is done by the word of God. 
not human beings. Are we together? It is only through the word of God, through inspiration, that regulation can be accepted. And so thank you so much, Sister Irina. Welcome. And uh, we found out that uh, in this way, license shall not be given to disorderly elements to control the work at this time. We are living in a time when order, system, and unity of action are most essential. And the truth must bind us together like strong cords in order that no distracted efforts may be witnessed among the workers. If disorderly manifestations appear, we must have what? Discernment to do what? To distinguish the superiors from the genuine. How do you distinguish between the superiors and the genuine? What should lead that discernment? The word of God should lead discernment because people say that I discern this and this. And yet we are told to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, there is no mourning for them. There is no resurrection if you don't, never knew. Or there is no truth in them. The people who don't not, do not abide in truth. When Satan didn't abide in truth, what happened to him? He was thrown down to earth. To earth. And if we don't abide in truth, there is no resurrection morning for us. Let no message be done what? Proclaimed until they have borne a careful scrutiny in every jot or title or title. And that is why we are here in this week, in this conference, that any questions that we are having as leaders and as gospel workers, we may be able to explore them together so that we may reach an amicable agreement, not according to opinions of men, but to what does save the Lord. And I thank the Lord for the sessions we have had today because they have been more interactive and even we are able to move steps forward, is it? Yeah, that is how the church should be running. That is how one conference should be touching another conference. So that one conference is not teaching another thing and another conference is teaching another thing. We have to move in concert. We have to move like trained soldiers. We are told, again, we see that it is the system of organization that is recommended. Disorganization will, of course, tend to throw matters in the condition they were in before the system was established. Which condition was the church in before organization? Confusion, Babylon, and fanatism, is it? Yes, and we don't want to go back to such a way of working when the work is ending in the heavenly sanctuary. You know, the angels are hiring here and there, seeking out people whom they can use to finish the gospel. We see also that the object to be gained by the system of order is that of what? Unity and harmony. I hope we are reading together. Sometimes we have a tendency of looking at the preacher instead of reading together. Sometimes people say, if you look at the preacher when he speaks, then you get the words direct. But learn to read also. <laughs> Amen. Yes, we see also that the object to be gained by the system of order is that of what? Unity and harmony. In carrying forward what? The work. So the danger pointed out, should we now disorganize? Was the, uh, the apparent danger when organization and a system of working was brought to the attention of his people at, at first? So council versus independence. Under gospel order and organization. Let us look at cancel versus independence. And yesterday I was posing a question which I'll continue to posing unto you. And it is sad matter that, uh, I don't know if I should say this. How many have heard the, their phone calls from Malin? You have heard a phone call from Malin. You have heard a phone call from Malin. Dickens? Yes. You have had a phone call, is it? What is happening in Malindi is not good. It's not good. I, I was sitting there in the morning and a, a brother sent me an SMS, which uh, it was not good. Yesterday, I, I posed a question. These people who are working with independent ministries, uh, uh, in, in independent spirit, who disciplines them? 
when they do the things that um, we are seeing now they're being done. Can you read this SMS? I, I just want us to hear what is happening. I, I won't disclose every matter, but listen to what the brother will do. You say? Just allow. Morning, brother. We are together with uh, Brother Barak. I hope you have heard of the tough situation we are at Mr. Arnington's place in Malindi. We have called friends from everywhere who have contributed to us 5,000, but we still require 3,000 to reach Rongo town. <clears throat> Kindly, we'll, we will appreciate any of you can offer to us. We'll, uh, kindly, we'll appreciate any help you can offer to us. Thank you so much. This is a message that I was sending the morning when uh, Pastor Allen was presenting. And uh, this kind of independent spirit and what it plants people in, and people take advantage of other brethren and they mistreat them in such a way, it's not a good thing and it must be called out because this is a public sin. This is not a secret sin, if you think it's a secret sin. Where you start practicing independent uh, spirit and then plunge the people in your problems because you do not want to cancel with other people. And then after everything has gone bad, you see what happens. Now other people are involved. And so who can discipline that brother? No one can discipline that brother and he should be a called upon in what he's doing. So in testimonies of the church number 33, page 62, these words are, Found one point will have to be done one, and that is individual what as soldiers in Christ's army, there should be concert of action in the various departments of what of the work. The laborers should cancel together. No one is to strike out on his independent judgment and work according to his own want. Mind. Are we together? Regardless of the counsel of those connected with him, if we think ourselves sufficient to manage the work of God and depend for success on our wisdom to plan and execute, we may expect what? Defeat and losses, for they will surely do what? Yes. Don't think that if you start working independently and at the beginning you have some little prosperity, then it will be sure success for your ministry. We are told that conference has to touch conferences. Leaders have to counsel with leaders. In the multitude of counsel, there is peace or safety. And so it can be readily seen that a people who had been thrust uh, out from organized bodies and placed where each had to think and act for himself and who had become accustomed to a sort of independent in thought and action will be in what? Will be in what? In danger of confusion in labor under what? The third angel's message, unless some system was established for the promotion of what? Harmony of action. There is no way. The third angel's message is the last message. When it unites with the second one to proclaim Babylon is fallen for the last time, then it forms the fourth angel's message. But these messages cannot be accomplished with independent spirit. Because look here, we are going to heaven as one church, not a divided church. And if we will live as brothers in heaven, what has to be done? We should live as brothers on earth. When Christ comes, he is not changing anything. He is not changing our disposition in any way. This immortality is what is clothed with immortality, but character is stamped forever. Is it true? So what if you have an independent spirit? Do you think heaven is a place to practice independent spirit? No. And so what happens when Christ comes with such a spirit? You are numbered among the wicked, is it? Yes. And so, this is the object that was first presented and which has been kept in view as the different phases of the work has been developed. It is not a plan calculated to prevent people from searching for truth and seeking divine guidance for themselves, but it is an arrangement which should promote unity among a multitude of what? 
thinkers. The, the session we were discussing about uh, the Holy Communion was somebody barred from expressing his thoughts. When we came to ordaining church workers, was anyone barred or uh, 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 rejected from expressing his views? No, but you get different ideas from different angles, and then you bring together, and then you find harmony. And by the way, when we gather like this and give out different views, you know, we are just echoing, echoing what the church members will be asking you. And when you didn't have an answer, now when another person gives out his ideas, then you can understand how you'll be able to answer your congregation. The reason why the church leaders and the Bible workers are asked questions and they can't answer them is because they do not counsel and discuss things freely. And so you are a one man thinking in one direction. You need another man thinking from another direction. And when these things are brought together, then they are harmonized, and then the church of God can be fed with present truth from different angles. An iron sharpens an iron. There is no one who understands the Bible, the whole Bible by himself. Not even if the Bible could be understood by one person, you know the six, six books could be written by one person. But what did God do? Used almost 70 people to author the Bible in about 1,500 uh, uh, years. And now we have the Bible that we read from. So, uh, this is... Uh, the matter of private judgment and union with the body is plainly stated in testimony for the church, volume 3, page 492, published in the year 1875. I have been shown that no man's judgment should be surrendered to the judgment of any one man. But when the judgment of the general world, conference, which is the highest authority God has upon the earth, is exercised, private, independent, and private judgment must not be maintained, but done more. Surrender. Now, I know people have a problem with that statement when we talk about general conference, uh, uh, the general conference. But uh, the general conference per se was not a bad thing because it had delegates from different conferences, is it? What became a problem with the general conference is one man exercising what? Decision making of what was presented. It was like the president of the general conference was speaking ex cathedra like a pope. And then the general conference, she said that a time that it used to be the voice of God, it's no more. Why? Because wrong sentiments had came into it and they were exercising kingly power. And uh, in fact, Laura really uh, gives an explanation of what he has just said about. He says this, these words, the words that the general conference judgment should be respected, are not, let us read together, to be that a conference of what? Who are led by and had what? Was the highest authority of God on what? Nay or no. Verily, for such have been declared not the voice of what? It is rather an assembly of what? Representatives of the work gathered together the way we are right now. And my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ with them, First Corinthians 5, 4, 5, whose decisions are ratified by what? Yes. The way we have discussed things here and the way we are still in discussing, and then we arrive at conclusion based on inspiration. When we are seated like this, the local church has to respect this general conference, this meeting, because they should be praying for us. We should be praying for them. And any decision we are making today, we are not making creeds, but we are going back to the churches to preach the truth nor to say that we were seated in a conference and we have come up with a creed to be followed as a local church. But we must show the congregation that this is what does save the Lord. And so, Sister White says at last this. After saying that the judgment of the general conference should be respected, and then Laura saying that when men seated and are directed by the Spirit of the Lord, now Sister White has to say this. 
I am what? That there is to be what? A time when the mist will be done what? Clear. I hope that this time has done what? Has begun when? Right here where we are in this time. That was when Sister White sat in that conference. This is when we are sat here. We hope that these mists are being taken away right now. What does he continue to say? We want what? The mists here to be? I want to say that from the light given to me by God, there should have been years ago organizations such as are now are proposed. When we first met in conference 1863, it was thought that the general conference should extend over what? The whole world. But this is not in God's order. Conferences must be organized in different localities, and it will be for the head of the different conferences to have it thus. This does not mean that we are to cut ourselves apart from what? One another. And be as separate atoms. Every conference is to touch every other conference and be in harmony with every other conference. God wants us to talk for this, and he wants us to act for this. We are the people of God who are to be separate from the world. We are to stand as what? Representatives of what? Traditions and creeds. Sacred what? And so if we will have the wrong conference, it should be touching the Kisi conference. The Kisi conference will be touching the Kisumu conference. The Kisumu conference will be touching Nakuru, Nairobi, Eldoret, and so on. We are not to set ourselves apart as independent atoms. And when all these conferences now meet together, we align ourselves, we come together like this, and we are in a session deliberating a, a matter, then it has to be uh, actually respected. And why were the conferences to be separated like this? The conference in Nyeri and Embu cannot understand the problems in Kis, can it? Even the weather patterns are different. Or you think the weather patterns in Kenya are the same? If I tell somebody in Embu it has rained until I cannot pass a bridge, I want an aeroplane, how will he understand that? He will say, and how can we afford an aeroplane? That is a waste of money. Yet you don't know if I go by road, I'll drown. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And so the conference in Kisi, while it is calling the conference in Nyeri, it should understand that that is the person on the ground and understands the problem on the ground. And instead of hindering the work, it should be able to support that work. There are conferences which are blessed with people who are rich. There are conferences who have people who are poor. Is it true? Now, the conference in Kisumu should not be the whole, it is money, to the conference in Rome. Are you understanding? These conferences, they have to touch each other. And we are told, now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak what? How do you speak the same thing if you are not counseling and speaking and talking together? And that there be no what? Divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind, in the same what? Judgment. First Corinthians 1 10. The scripture clearly shows the Lord's desire for unity and harmony among those who give instruction to his people that they may be not themselves instigators of confusion. You know how churches are in confusion, and how will it be if you lead us you are in confusion? And by the way, I encourage you people to study. Do you know that you people have to study as leaders and Bible workers? You think it is just about going about and preaching. Preaching is a very little work in our, our commission and commission. We have to be people who can rightly divide the word of truth, not being ashamed of it. And I'll tell you one thing. We don't have to be reflectors of other people's mind. Do you know that? Even we are told in medical missionaries, the other medical missionary prescription should not be taken by another and be set as a standard. You know that. Have you heard that statement by Sister Wade? Never should it be like that. The Lord will want to do greater things amongst us, and we aim so long. 
The fact that somebody has come up with a prescription and it worked for such and such a disease is not a guarantee that is how God will work always. We have always to be depending on God for cancer, but anyhow, we cancel them together so that we may move in unity. Confusion after 1844. We are just going through church history, gospel order, and organization. In the book uh, that uh, we are looking at by John Norton Laubra, there is uh, the church, it is order and organization and discipline. The church, it is order, organization, and discipline. Page 97, paragraph 2. After the close of the prophetic period in 1844, until the light of the third angel's message was seen, there was what? Confusion among the believers. This confusion, to some extent, existed until they saw the real and became settled in belief of what? Of it. The Lord was meanwhile manifesting the true gift of prophecy in connection with the unfolding light of the third angel's message. Those who were willing to accept his guidance now had the privilege of coming into what? Unity of, of faith, which the true gift of spirit had are designed to promote. <coughs> to illustrate the difficulties to be overcome, brought about by the confused ideas of those who had just accepted the Sabbath truth, we refer to the first general gathering of our people in central New York. In which year? August 1848, they requested Elder and I want us to concentrate, read, take the references. They requested Elder and Miss White and Elder Joseph Bates to come from Massachusetts to give them instruction in the truths of the message. Concerning this meeting, we read that together about 35 were present. All that could be collected in that part of the state. But of this number, hardly how many? Two did what? Some were holding serious errors and each strenuously had his own views, declaring that they were according to what? The scripture. Testimonies for the church, volume 1, page 86. The Lord, through the gift of prophecy, instructed these people, respecting the truth in contrast with their errors. And when that series of meetings closed, they were what? United Kamba. Gospel order put into place. And then people can be able to walk in unity. When people become independent atoms, they can't yield judgment to anyone. They can't be disciplined by anyone. They can't uh, respect anyone because they are of their own. As to the kind of instruction given at the time to correct prevailing errors and save the ranks from confusion, we read in Experience and Views, pages 53 and 54, published in 1851. Such a subject as what? The sanctuary in connection with the 2300 days, the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus are perfectly calculated to explain the past Advent movement and show what our present position is, establish the faith of the doubting and give certainty to the glorious future. This I have frequently seen were the principal subjects on which the messengers, ministers must do what? Now you tell me one thing. Before, and I have ever asked this question, what is our mission? What is our mission? Hey, don't be caught up. What is our mission? To preach the three angels' message, is it? That is the truth and finish the work, is it? Now tell me one, one thing. What is the preface of the three angels' message? No, 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 you don't know your Bible. What is the preface? And I'm using the word preface, subtly. Because if I use an easy English, somebody will get the answer. 
What is the preface of the three angels' messages? Eh? No, that is not the preface. That is the first angel's message, brother. It's not the preface. What is the forward of the three angels' messages? No. What, Brother Dickens, what are I saying? You are holding a Bible. You shouldn't be paying it. I'm saying uh, that it is coming and about the present I wanted to know when you are paying school fees for English classes, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> what is a preface? <laughs> eh? <laughs> what is a preface, Brother Mo? A preface is a summary. What will be a conclusion? <laughs> <laughs> Brother Cyprian, a preface is an introduction, is it? And I didn't want to use the word introduction because I know you are clever. So what is an introduction of the three angels' messages? Oh my. Where do you get that introduction? I, okay, let me make things easier for you. A minister should not be this cunning. A preface is the very words that comes before the message itself. And so we are having the preface, and I saw what? The lamb doing what? And with him what? And these 144,000, when you read in Revelation 15, they are united in a square, is it? It is an organized company. It's not a division. It's not a group of uh, divided people having independent spirits and working as independent atoms. So we have 144,000. That is the hierarchy. They are standing with the lambda 144, and then they give the message, the three angels' messages, which means that they are united perfectly in what they are doing. That is what organization brings. This is what makes the third angels go out with power. People speaking the same things at the same time, all over the four corners of the world. And for, in order for this to be able to happen, People need to be counseling together. People need to be having these conferences. They need to be discussing and looking at truth from different angles so that when they charge forward, have you seen an army which is trained together? Oh, you have not been in the army. When it charges against the enemy, how does it do? This generation. You haven't even seen the movies. <laughs> you are going to fight, okay? Are you going to fight? <laughs> Mugo is saying, no, Mugo, we are in a war. <laughs> we are going to fight, is it? Yes. You don't know where the enemy may come from, is it? Yeah. So what do you do? As an army. <laughs> when this brother is looking for the enemy from that point, the other brother should be doing what? Looking in the opposite direction. What does that mean? Yeah, they are covering each other, is it? Can our people who are divided cover each other? No. That is why we are told that the spasmodic movements of this generation, they are like un uh, untrained horses. One lunges forward and another does what? Lunges the other side. One pulls with all the effort and one is just standing like this. Because we would like to see the downfall of others rather than the prosperity of others. And that is why we have independent ministries and independent spirits. And so, the three angels' message is to unite the people who are sounding the message at the end of the time, and this can only be achieved by uh, gospel order and organization. Cause of the confusion. What is the cause of the confusion? 
We read in the same book of the necessary, that is experience, uh, this is the experience and views. Some who have formerly run deep into what? Fanaticism will be the first now to run before God sends them, before they are purified from their past errors, having error mixed with the truth, they will feed the flock of God with it. And if they were suffered to go on, the flock will become sickly and destruction and death will fall. So when there is disorganization, when there is fanaticism, the flock is not fed well. And the flock is always arguing about this and arguing about that. Instead of concentrating on the mission before them, which is finishing the work. This being the situation, we can readily see that the very first thing wanting in establishing order among the Seventh-day Adventists was some regulation by which the flock might know who are what approved ministers who not just approved were liable to teach them pernicious errors about the year 1852 the lord gave the following instruction which was first published in supplement to experience and views what did the lord write in 1853 those men who are not called of god are generally the very ones that are the most confident that they are so called and that their laborers are very important they go into the field and do not generally exert a good influence, yet in some places they have a measure of success. And this leads them and others to think that they are surely called of God. It is not a positive evidence that men are called of God because they have some success. For angels of God are now moving upon the hearts of his honest children to enlighten their understanding as to the present truth, that they may lay hold upon it and live. And even if self send men put themselves where God does not put them and profess to be teachers and souls receive the truth by hearing them talk it, this is no evidence that they are called of God. The souls who receive the truth from them receive it to be brought into trial and bondage as they afterward find that these men were not standing in the council of God. You see that? You go somewhere, you preach, you baptize, and somebody asks, Brother, I have never heard that you are ordained or lay hands on. Why have you baptized? Why are you baptized? What do you say? God has ordained me. The Holy Spirit ordains, is it? And then the brother meets another brother on the road and gives him the truth and he asks him, here is the river, why can't I baptize him? And you are the first one who will ask, who has sent you to baptize? Are you understanding what I'm saying? You went and did something, another one took liberty of that and does something and that and that, and so the error continues like that. That is why we must have organization, so that things must be done in order. People may not be running here and there thinking that they have the truth when they do not have it. Church decides on teachers. This is important. And I want the elders amongst us to understand these things. They are important because you are going to your churches to do something. I saw that the church should feel their responsibility and should look carefully and attentively at what? The lives, qualifications, and general course of those who do what? To be teachers. If unmistakable evidence is not given that God has called them and the war is upon them, if they heed not this call, it is the duty of the church to do what? And let it be known that they are not acknowledged as teachers by what? The church. This is the only course the church can take in order to be clear in this matter for the burden lies upon them. Elders, are you listening? No one can just rise amongst you and say, I'm a teacher of the word and I'm going out. Are you listening? No way, things are not done in that way. The fact that a person can quote some few verses and some few spirit of prophecy quote, 
it's not a sign that those people have been sent out. What is the fruit, the practical fruit of this person in the church? Do we always ask ourselves these questions? Before we send out young people and even older people to preach up, what is their character? What is their influence in the church? What mold do they have on their families or the other youth in the church? Have their fruit been proven that they can do that? How do they talk to the elder? You know, when you send out young people to preach, you are not just sending them amongst young people, or that's what you do. Will they not meet older people? They will meet older people. Do they know how to communicate to the older people? How do they communicate with the older people in church? How do they behave with the young girls in church? How do they behave with the mothers in the church? And so the church leadership must be strong. But now what if a person does not belong to a church? Who will vet the person? Can you vet a person who doesn't belong to a church? No. Just as well as you can discipline a person who is not in church. And then I saw that this door at which the enemy comes in to perplex and trouble the floor can be done what? Shut. I inquired of the angel how it could be closed, said he. The church must flee to God's word and become established upon one. Gospel order which has been overlooked and what done one. This is indispensable necessary to bring the church into the unity of faith. You have ever heard that gospel sounders sometimes exercise kingly power, and I admit that. Elder Gifa, you cannot come into my church and I tell you to preach on dress reform. I have never heard you preaching on dress reform. What if you cause confusion in my church? And if you want to go and say I have practiced kingly power, go, I'll accept that. There is no way you can just come here and you tell me, sit down, I, sit, uh, I preach in your church. No way. God is not a God of confusion. He's not the author of confusion. People must be listened to what they are speaking. People must have interviews with people to know what they are preaching. You cannot just, and how many of you can entrust their children with somebody they don't know? Is that what you do? Maybe just because of poor parenting, that is why we do these things in church. We are told that the church starts where? At home. Now, if you don't know how to manage your own family, you will come in the church of God and do anything you want. So how many amongst you will give their children just to anyone to take care of them? No one. And that is some, something wild, is it? But you come to spiritual things and you don't know how to behave in the, in, in the house of the Lord. And so in gospel sounders, we don't give somebody a pulpit whom we haven't heard preach. I, I, I'm just bold enough to say this on the camera. You must be tried. We must see your labors. Not because we are fit and we are so good, but we can accept confusion. There are some things which we have agreed as a people. Is it? We have sat together and discussed these things nights and days. Don't think that we, Zato comes from Oyukis, I come from Butere, and Wycliffe, you comes from where? And we just meet here on the pulpit, and Wycliffe can present anything, Zato can present anything, and Beacons here, and uh, Brother uh, Felix, and we have John Mugo there. And they present just anything on the pulpit which we have not agreed on. There's nothing like that unless they are under inspiration. And we shall know they are under inspiration if it only turns with the word of God. So there must be a system of order even amongst us ourselves. The leaders must agree upon some points to be presented before the people. The flock don't have to be confused because now you hear people quote uh, First Corinthians that uh, the spirit of prophets is subject to the spirit of prophets. And so I'm a teacher like you, give me a pulpit. Nothing like that. You are not a prophet in the first place. Read the verse again, by the way. There is a time a prophet can come amongst you 
and he says that I have a word from the Lord. And do you know what the Lord will do? He will not harden the people who are on the pulpit. Do you think what that is what the Lord did? No way. If a, if somebody if somebody has a message in this congregation right now that the Lord has told him to speak something. And he says, Brother Sam, I have something that the Lord is telling me to tell the church. Do you know God will have to speak to me? Because he knows I'm a human being in some way. And he'll have to soften my heart so that if the brother rises, I may be able to sit down and listen to him to speak. And so we should be careful just allowing people to come into our churches. And this is what we talked about, Elder Kepa. Don't just allow somebody to come in your church and say that I have a message for the church. A message. Which message have we have, by the way? Do you want to teach the 2300 days in another way? Then if you have to teach that, teach me first. Then I teach my congregation instead of confusing my congregation. And this is not my congregation. It is the flock of God and it doesn't have to be confused. Ordination of ministers. People don't have just to run in the field. We talked about Paul. We are talking about organizing the churches and having a gospel order in the churches. Like, are, are we together? Yeah. Let not just people come to aim at we are reformers from where? See you in the other part. Where? Rwanda. Rwanda or Rwanda? Rwanda. Rwanda. <laughs> Weekly, if you sound like a reformer from Rwanda, like Maru don't allow this guy on your pulpit. Yeah, I, I'm a reformer coming from Rwanda. See, you are a reformer coming from Tanzania. And I have a message for Kenyans. There's no problem with that. God sending somebody. But there should be some order. Not somebody just walks in the room and I have been sent by the Lord. Which Lord sent you? Who has commissioned you to come? There should be some respect you should accord to the church. And you have, if you have a message, I like how the pioneers used to do things and the prophet. Do you know that Sister White did just go and speak to the congregation sometimes? He gathered the leaders. Have you ever noticed that? If he, she had a very serious message, but they didn't just go to the floor. She even wrote letters to independent leaders, is it? She, she writes a letter to A.G. A. Daniels, she writes a letter to James White, she writes a letter to Wagner, and all these people. And they, he, she could say that, I want to speak to the leaders about this and this man. And then, when the leaders could no longer hear her, she said, now I want to speak to the floor itself. There's a time that she wanted to speak, to pass a message, and the leaders were not listening to her. And she said that now I want to speak to the people themselves. Because the people who are being given the message to pass to the people who are not passing the message. The ordination of the ministers, after speaking of how the apostolic church was troubled with false teachers, and of the course they pursued to remedy the difficulty. The testimony continues in these words. Let us read together. I saw that we are no more secure from now that they were in the and if we do no more, we should take a special measure as they did to secure what? Peace. Harmony and union of what? We have the example and should follow it. Brethren of experience and sound minds should do what? Assemble and following the word of God and the sanction of the Holy Spirit should do what? With favor and what? Lay hands upon those who have given full proof that they were received, they have received their commission of who? And set them apart to devote themselves entirely to his work, this act will show the sanction of the church to their going forth as messengers to carry the message, solemn message ever given to men. Praise the Lord. Yeah. This is gospel order in church organization. That men do not just have to arise saying that I have a message, I have to go here and I have to go there. People should assemble 
and pray. By the way, the spirit of prayer is never seen among us. Do you know we do not pray? Sister White says that if the church of God were half awake, half awake, not full awake, how mighty they will do the work. She's saying only half awake, not full awake. So what if we full awake? I, I don't know if this was literal or if this was not literal. During the, the, the times of the apostles, have you ever read that they prayed until the house did what? Shoe. Is it? Was it literal or what is it? It was literal and yet the house didn't fall. What kind of prayers are those? And after praying, they went out boldly. And when they stepped out, you know what is written? The priests were converted. But you, you are still struggling with the elders of the general conference. Even the pastor can't listen to you. You come to an elder and he's asking, young man, what are you saying? You have not come in the power of the Holy Spirit. You have come with your own power. And then he tells you some a few things and you say, I, I can't preach even in this region. I'm, I'm trying to go to another region. These people assembled. They prayed until the house shook. And when they stepped out of that house, they preached and the priest accepted the message. Another time, the apostles are arrested. Peter and the others and the assemble of the people of God. It is there and it's praying earnestly. And then the angel is sent to the prison to free the prisoners. We, we don't know the sounds of prayers. And that is why we are told in Selected Messages, Book 1, page 118, page 122, that the, this old standard bearers knew how to, how to fight with the Lord and experience and have a season of uh, the latter end war, of the Holy Spirit of war. And now these are passing off the scene. And where are the people who will take their, 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 their place? Where are the young men who are to fill these vacancies that has been left by the standard bearers? Do we have such a young man? And the other time I was talking to the young people that this movement was established by the people who are 15, 17, 20, and 21 years. But we are seated here, people who are above 27 years, and yet we don't know the signs of prayer. If only we could know how these people were united in one accord. And when those people were united in one accord in Acts chapter 2, they prayed, and then the rain was able to come. Just right on time. Things happening on time. But now it has been left for us. 177 years since the high priest entered into the most holy place, and yet we are still here. There is no sign of finishing the work. What signs do we see? the enemy finishing his work. But we see the signs of the church finishing its work. Right now, you can tell me what Donald Trump has done. You can tell me what Biden will do next year. And you can tell me how the Sunday law is in the pipeline. But can you tell me how the third angel's message will go forward? Present need of what? Of all. Another statement is found in Supplement to experience and use page 12, which says, the Lord has shown that gospel order has been too much done what? Feared and formality should be shunned, but in so doing, order should not be neglected. There is order in heaven, there was order in the church when Christ was upon the earth, and after his departure, order was strictly observed among his apostles. And now in these last days, while God is bringing his children into the unit of the faith, there is more real need of order than ever before. For as God unites his children, Satan and his evil angels are busy to prevent this unity and to destroy it. Now, the church organization at that time in cards of recommendation. And you, you will see how to go about this. Because this is the order that was there at that time. I don't know how we'll do it. By doing what? Comparing dates, it, it appears there were two years 
from the time experience and views was published until the supplement appeared from 1851 to 1853. The letter or the latter called for action. The latter is uh, the supplement to experience and views. Experience and views was written by E.G. White in 1851. Are we together? Then the supplement to experience and views was written in 1851, 53. You have something? Yeah. If you have something, you remind me, please. So the latter called for an action. That is the supplement to experience uh, and views. The delay to act was that all might understand the subject. The fear was the cause those who will pursue who claim freedom to go with no restraint. From 1853, the plan adopted was that of giving the ministers who had proved their gift and were evidently approved of the Lord and in harmony with all the work. A card doing what? <coughs> I, I know you will not like to read this, but nonetheless, read it. A card recommending them to the fellowship of the Lord's people everywhere, simply stating that they were approved in the work of the gospel ministry. These cards were dated and signed by two of the leading ministers known by our people to be leaders in the work. The one given to the writer in January 1853 was signed in behalf of the church, James White, Joseph Bates, leading one. So what do we do today? Brian, I saw you seated there at the back. You know you have sat like a, a, a microscope, a binocular. You can see things from afar, and you can remind us of other quotes we are living up. So what do you do today? I want you to start thinking as we present this. Now, it is starting to hit the ground, is it? Things are starting to be complex and hard, is it? Are we in confusion or are we are we still at the at least uh, are we still following? Yes. Or we are confused at some point? We are still together. But this statement is startling, is it? Yes. Now let us start on more so that uh, we may think about it. So liberty demanded. This is gospel order and church organization. Of course, those who claimed what? Liberty, liberty to do us. To preach what they and to go when and where they pleased without consultation with anyone, fail to get cards of commendation. They, with their sympathizers, grew off and commenced a warfare against those whom they claimed were depriving them of their liberty. Knowing that it was the testimonies that had prompted us as a people to act, who prompted them? When, when, when Laura speaks about testimonies, what is he referring to? Eh? Sister West's writing, and this is in supplement to experience and views. Knowing that it was the testimonies that had prompted us as a people to act to establish order, these opponents soon turned their warfare against instruction from that source. Who is that source? Sister White, claiming that when they got that gift out of the way, the message will go unrestrained to it is loud and clear. So they had to do away with the prophet. They rejected the spirit of prophecy. Did the loud cry sound and the work was finished? You should be in heaven right now. Maybe you could have not been born. What they thought would finish the work, did it finish? I want you to start thinking about it. Withdrawal of the discontent. Our people stood faithfully at their work following the light the Lord had given, leaving the opposers alone, and the result is seen as given in Review and Herald, December 6, 1854, where Elder James uh, White speaks of the situation as follows. 
let us read together there never has been such a, a strong union as seems to exist with the remnant art and there seems to be a general waking up to the work of who the let's code to which some refer in this number meaning the opposition party will prove one of the greatest blessings to work to the cause it will be put I, it will put the people of God on their guard in their future cause and free them from some who have been a burden to the cause and whom they could not reform. And so with the establishment of point number one in church order, we could see in one year the blessed fruit predicted in the union of the flock. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you ready for gospel order and church organizing? Yes. Are we ready to close the doors that actually Satan comes in to perplex the church? Yes. What is the design of organization? This is my last point, and then I'll continue. I won't go through the whole material. You have to take it and read it yourselves. Those people who fear reading, this is the time that we should read. Trans night, read. I told you if there's a time that we need not to sleep is now. In 1844, when the brethren were searching for truth as hidden treasure, how many hours did they sleep? Very few hours. They said that some days they could go without sleep and eating praying for the Lord to reveal, just a point. Do you think that when uh, Hiram Edison was walking through his field after the disappointment, and he was walking in the field and the heavens opened and he saw Christ moving in the most holy place, it was a job. People had prayed, not for days, for weeks and months, that the Lord may show something. Why the disappointment? And when it came to that morning, they had prayed until people were tired, but they were still praying. And they had, I think they were just taking a break. Some said, let us go uh, in this side. And uh, Hiram Edison decided to go with another brother in this side. And they were walking in a mood of prayer, asking themselves questions. Why has he not come? Why has he not come? What is happening? Was this a lie or what? And in that mood of prayerful walking, Hiram Edison looks and then the heaven is open. And Christ is moving from the holy place into the most holy place. And then he then comes to the other brother and asks him, this is what has been revealed. And the brother is asking, what is it? And he says that Christ was not to come on earth, he was to go into the most holy place. And this brother says, we cannot waste a second, let us run back to the house and be able to explain this thing that you are saying right now. And then they come back to the house, and then Hiram Edison, standing there, he says, I have a message for the church. Christ went into the most holy place he was not to come to earth. And they again start weeping. You haven't read the biography of Sister White when he says that they wept like little children. First of all, at the disappointment and then at the revelation. <laughs> they wept like little children. And when they left that house, they were filled with the Holy Spirit and the zeal to finish the work. And when they went to the road and people were scorning at them and telling them all sorts of these things, they told them, surely we have a Lord amongst us and he doesn't love. And they started explaining the disappointment. How much do you pray? Like this people. How many of you have wept in prayers? We go on our knees. God bless this food before we take it. Amen. We rise and go away. And we say, we prayed and ate. What kind of prayers? We hardly pray. So this was the design of organization. Organization was designed to secure what? Unity of? And as a protection from what? 
in posture. It was never intended as a scourge to campaign what? Obedience. But rather for the protection of the people of God. Christ does not drive his people. He does what? He called. It says, Christ never designed that human minds should be molded for heaven by the influence merely of other human minds. The head of every man is Christ. His part is to lead and to mold and to stamp his own image upon the heirs of eternal growth. However important organization may be for the protection of the church and to secure harmony of action, it must not come in to take the discipline from the hands of the master. Those who drafted the form of organization adopted by Seventh-day Adventists labored to incorporate it as far as possible, the simplicity of expression and form found in the word, not in the creed. The more of the spirit of the gospel manifested and the more simple, the more efficient the word. The system of gospel order and organization should not be a complex, complex thing, but a simple structure which brings in protection, unity, harmony of action. The, the supervision of, in the established order. The general conference takes the general supervision of the work in all its branches, including state conferences. The state conference takes the supervision of all branches of the work in the state, including the churches in the state. And the church is a body of Christians associated together with the symbol covenant to keep the commandments of God and what? the faith of Jesus. Uh, I'll read this, then minister's credentials, then we close. <coughs> the officers of the local church are what? Servants? We are finishing. Don't be tired. The officers of a local church are the servants of? And not? To rule over it with church force. He that is greatest among you shall be your what? Quoted from Matthew 23, 11. These officers should set examples of patience, watchfulness, prayer, kindness, and liberality to the members of the church and should manifest a good degree of that love to those they serve exhibited in the life and teachings of our Lord. So, I read this. This is a uh, minister's credentials. The meeting and conference in session on October 1861 decided that it is ministers should do what? Carry papers of recognition consisting of a certificate of what? And credentials signed by the chairman and secretary of the conference, which credentials should be renewed what? Annual. <coughs> so one, one of the reasons why people disagree with that is this. One of the principal claims made by those who warred against organization was that it abridged their liberty and independence, and that if one stood clear before the Lord, that that was all the organization that is needed. It is upon this point when the church order was contested, we read, Satan well knows that success only attended order and harmonious action. He well knows that everything connected with heaven is in perfect order. The subjection and thorough discipline mark the movements of the angelic host. He deceives even the professed people of God and makes them believe that order and discipline are enemies to what? Spirituality, that the only safety for them is to let each pursue his own course. All the efforts made to establish order are considered dangerous, a restriction of rightful liberty, and hence are fear as for part. And so, we read about 
these statements yesterday and I'm not going to repeat them. I'm going to pause at this moment and then I'll pick it from this point to you. There must be what? That is where I'll pick it tomorrow. I'm praying that uh, the God of peace be with you in these things and uh, enlighten your minds and be able uh, to bring in just the order that is needed for this time. We need to finish the work. Amen? Amen. We cannot. I, I'm tired. I'm tired of living in this world. Maybe you are not tired. You, you are not yet tired. You people you have not, you are not ready to go. You are not ready to meet Christ, to say bye-bye to this world. Maybe we have a lot of investments in this world. We have still close friends maybe we are attached to. But uh, I, I won't rehearse the story, but uh, when, when my wife was sick, actually last year, that, that's when I realized this is not a place to live, this world. No way. It brought me to some kind of thinking that uh, I, I, we can't allow Satan to continue forever holding us in this way. It was an experience that I have never gone through. The only other experience I went through that made me want to leave this world was when my sister died and it cut off my going to school. I mourned about it and I mourned about it and I said, this world should come to an end. But that was a, a, a mourning without knowledge. But when my wife was sick, I, I came to understand something, that Satan is not delighted in anything in this world. And so I'm not delighted with him, Satan, also. I want this thing to come to an end, and we go, Christ to come. But the work cannot be finished in the state that these people, this church is in, in this world. And so, the good Lord be with us, and uh, I want us to pray and open a forum of questions and contribution, because I still see we have, uh, we are kind of running out of time. We, we have like 20 minutes to bring in our comments and uh, our, our contributions. So let us pray, and then we can end into that session. <laughs> Our Heavenly Father, human instrumentalities are so insufficient to bring truth at should to thy people. But we pray that uh, these little drops that we are getting from the lips of ministers may arise a desire for us to know the truth, Lord. I pray that you may awake us and give us a new zip, not only to go outside there, but to have a fervent spirit of praying and knowing thy will. We want to reach the uh, stature and the measure of the man Jesus Christ. And Lord, we see how he assembled the twelve, ordained them and sent them out. We don't want to run independently. We want to be organized and finish the work. Not for any reward that is awaiting us in heaven, not even for the problems you are having in this world, but for vindicating the character of the son. Thank you so much for giving us this week to study the word and be able to commune together. Lord, we are praying that the Spirit may continue guiding and leading us. Please give us the showers of the latter rain in this meeting and visit us once again, once more in a special way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.